And joining us is Max Kaiser, inventor of the Hollywood Virtual Stock Exchange, used by Counter and Fitzgerald today on many of the stock exchanges of the world. And of course, he was a successful stock trader before he retired, I think at age 40. He's an old man now, 51, I think, if I'm going from memory. And he has MaxKaiser.com. He does the Kaiser Report on RT. He's done BBC TV shows, you name it. Got a chance to hang out with him in person over in London covering Bilderberg 2013. I still haven't gotten over uh, the fact that we haven't properly talked about what a victory that was to have, let's not exaggerate, 4,000 people show up in one day, 1,000 turned away at one time, right above the Bilderberg Hotel. Just amazing to have them exposed. And I haven't gotten to that. I'm going to cover that more on Sunday. Luke Radowski was sent on his private email that nobody knows about of We Are Change, which really scares them because it's a youth movement that's not partisan. It's about liberty. I helped him you know, launch it. Uh, Luke was sent an email that said, oh, this is Bilderberg Inside Info downloaded here. And it was child porn. And they did this right before he was about to reenter the U.S. And he was able on the Yahoo to scan it and preview and realize that was going on. But that's the type of insider stuff Bilderberg does. And I thought I would add that, that the times I've been death threatened particularly bad were right after Bilderberg meetings. The ones where they're listening to your phone and they tell you what you were just talking about when they death threat you. And it's Bilderberg. I mean, it's people associated with them. Uh, that's happened twice. It's happened other times too, right after Bilderberg. It's happened in front of witnesses. Or I, you know, my, uh, you know, I'm, I'm talking to my wife about one of her family members in the hospital. I go, all right, I'm getting on the plane in about an hour and a half. We're about to leave this restaurant. It was a great event. Uh, we really exposed them. All right, love you, bye. And then she calls back later, you know, two minutes later crying. They've called up and said, you know, they hope her parent dies and they're going to get us and all this. And I've got it on speakerphone, the guys are hearing. And then it's happened to me before. And I, I didn't mean to segue off into Bilderberg, but that's what the NSA can do. 840-something thousand private contractors with access to the NSA databases. Now under the core system, they're going to have access to all your medical records. You got herpes? You had a heart attack? Don't want people knowing. You got HIV? Don't people knowing. Uh, had a drug problem? Don't want people knowing. Uh, had gallstones removed? It's not anybody's business. Uh, don't want, you know, you're getting ready to... Uh, Try to get a job. You don't want to, it's all being shared. They're just mainlining, none of us having any privacy at any level. And I saw the video of Luke that's up on Infowars.com. He is completely freaked out on the video. Uh, he said it was just absolutely horrible what they sent him. And it's NATO and the globalists. NATO has been caught running, not just child kidnapping, but, but, but child snuff films. That's come out in the Italian news especially. I mean, it is the worst of the worst who will kill a million plus Iraqis just to get their oil and have weapon sales. The globalists think of you as dogs. They will let our own troops breathe nerve gas knowing. <laughs> there you go. This is the type of insanity. I guess they've got one of the audio keys in there. They think of you. You know, that was Max Kaiser. They think of you. He makes anything a joke, I tell you. He's even more eccentric than I thought knowing him in person. The point is, ladies and gentlemen, is that they think of you as absolute garbage. They knew they were ordering the demolition of 200-plus giant chemical bases, the biggest camisilla, one of the biggest in the world. I keep going back to this every day now. Just as If this doesn't get through to you, nothing will. Oh, wounded warrior, oh, trips, legs blown off, oh, it's horrible. Yeah, I give money to that kind of stuff. My point is, what about sending them to fraudulent wars? What about them having nerve gas? Our own government blows it up, but they don't want to admit they've blown it up, so they say, oh, don't wear any mask. It's false alarms. That's how evil these globalists are. They run all the major vices. They run all the major crime syndicates. They're evil. The government is run by evil people. And we better have a real debate about this and stop being naive. That's all I'm trying to say. I'm going to shut up and go to Max Kaiser. I saw this this morning. I wanted to get him to pop in for 10 minutes. He's doing that. Then we'll go back to your phone calls. Here's some of the articles. Bonds tank after jobs report. 10-year yield soars to 2.7. And that is out of Business Insider. Here's one um, out of uh, Economic Collapse blog that links through to a bunch of uh, mainstream uh, stories on this issue. Have central bankers lost control? Could the bond bubble 
implode even if there is no tapering. So we'll explain what all this means, uh, the type of inside manipulations going on. Kaiser has predicted the bond market would implode by the end of April. He says he's been a few months late and we're starting to see signs he may be right. Uh, Max Kaiser, uh, thank you for joining us uh, on July 5th, sir. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, the NSA, they, uh, they, they're they stooping on all these uh, medical records. I, I I had access to my own NSA medical records recently. Apparently, I've got a Kissinger stuck in my colon, and they're trying to, they're trying to get it out. So I don't know who I've got to call. Do I call the government? Do I, do I call Kissinger? I, how do I get this Kissinger out of my colon? But anyway, so Alex, as you know, last year on your show, I said that the bond market would sell off sharply, that there would have the end of the 30-year bond rally. And I said it would happen in April. And uh, I was uh, off by a few weeks or two months. Uh, the tippity top of the bond market came about roughly two months later, which is okay. That's a pretty good prediction. And uh, as a result, now you're entering from a 30-year bull market in the bond market, which means that interest rates for 30 years have been going down. So people who have been refinancing their homes, they've experienced that their mortgage rates have been going down. Or people that are getting a savings account at banks, they notice that their return on their savings account keeps going lower and lower because interest rates have been going down. But now you're entering into a secular bear market for bonds, which means that interest rates are going to start moving up and will probably just move up for the next 10 years. So the economy is heading into the very strong headwinds of rising interest rates. And so that's, that's what I was looking for. That's what's happened. And uh, the question is, will the central banks, will Federal Reserve Bank, will the new uh, guy here at the Bank of England, will they be able to swoop in, print another trillion or so in currency and money, and buy back lots of these bonds that are reckless, that are out of control now, they're, they're crashing. Will they be able to buy enough to get interest rates back down to where they were at historic lows? I don't think they're going to be able to. So we have now uh, the beginning of the bond apocalypse, as I have called it, and that is a major event. Now, the money coming out of bonds is going into things like stock market. It's going into the oil market. You know, the oil market's still above $100. Uh, it's not going into the gold market at the at the moment, and we can talk about that at some point. Uh, you know that is not uh, a, a market that's uh, anyone is jumping for joy at the moment. But we know we can talk about the, the the dynamic forces of that market at some point. But anyway, the bond market, as we have discussed uh, on your show a year ago, I said it would top out. It has, and and that's what people are freaking out about now. Now, again, you're an expert in this. You were very successful uh, working in the stock market. You worked, of course, with George Soros' son uh, and uh, you know, had, had a lot of legendary successes in the market. And so a lot of your predictions, unfortunately, have been uh, accurate. I, I have to be honest, I was glad when your prediction in late April didn't come true because even though I don't like this corrupt system, I'm not looking forward to the train wreck uh, of it crashing. And then the new too big to fail power grab, the authors of our uh, great pain will get out of it. So that's what I'm really not looking forward to. I, I don't like seeing you lose credibility because I think you're an interesting, smart guy and really say what you believe. And I didn't think you lost credibility because who can guess exactly what's going to happen when they've got so many manipulative tricks up their sleeves uh, in, uh, with all their different computer systems uh, to manipulate. But at a certain point, I mean, gold goes up, gold goes down. It keeps going up for 15 years or 13 years. I don't even really look at the price. I don't even worry about it because I know this paper is all going to die. There may be something new that comes out of it, but but regardless, so 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 I, I agree overall just as a layman who's interviewed hundreds of the world's experts on this, in, in, in my general understanding of economics, but how were you able, because it looks like now your, your huge prediction is starting to come true, uh, you know, a few months late, you said it'll start uh, there, you even said where it would spread, the types of bonds, it looks like it's the same types of bonds you talked about, you said what would come out of that, but you couldn't tell me last week when you were on, and we re-aired we re it yesterday, so we're back-to-back -back Kaiser today, the double Kaiser here, sounds like it's a strange type of knot or something, but uh, you were... You it's were, a bond apocalypse. It's all Kaiser 24-7. Exactly. But but what I'm trying to get at here with you is uh, specifically lay out the mechanics of this. Because last week you, you couldn't really answer it. 
Is Bernanke going to taper with QE Unlimited, QE Affinity, or are they going to keep pumping? Because obviously they know, and the insiders are going to do this, so they make even bigger profits. With your ear to the ground, what do you know about that? Well, many pundits have tried to pick this bond turn, and very famous pundits, more famous than I am. For example, Jim Grant of the Interest Rate Observer, or Jim Rogers, uh, for, you know, co-founder of Quantum Fund. Uh, Mark Faber, who you've had on your show, uh, Peter, uh, Peter, um, Schiff, Schiff. Uh, we've had them all on. Yeah. Of course, Gerald Salente. So, I mean, I just went out and, and decided, you know, I'm going to, they all, they say the trend is there. We're looking for a turn. I said, you know, here's a date, April 15th, uh, you know, making a bold prediction, uh, you know, and now it lo looks like that, that prediction was only off by a couple of months, but I mean, th this whole side of the equation of pundits, if you will, looking at the uh, debt that's been r r raising in the system really since World War II. You know, the, the, the American uh, GDP, the American growth has been financed through American banks and central banks taking on trillions of dollars with their debt. Under Obama, the amount of debt that Obama has allowed the Federal Reserve and other institutions to take on eclipses really anything Bush was up to. And it's almost it's more than all the debt ever before ever undertaken before Obama. So the American debt indebtedness is now way higher than than anyone could have imagined it. And at some point, the debt becomes a factor. So now, is he going to taper? I don't, I, you know, I, this is, here's, here's my analogy, and I'll give you an analogy, and it's a funny analogy, and unlike most of my funny comments, this, is, this is, happens to be funny by the fact that it is a, it's a funny image, but I'm not trying to be funny. But imagine if you were to swallow a porcupine. You know, the quills are facing out as you're swallowing that porcupine. Now, imagine, imagine regurgitating that porcupine and the quills are now sticking in your throat. That's the problem with, with unwinding all this debt is that it, it's not, you just simply can't flip a switch and unwind well, all plus the Plus, they took all the bailout money and re-leveraged it into even bigger derivatives. Well, that's, that's exactly right. The, all of the quantitative easing and all that money has been used as collateral to build up this ever bigger pyramid of debt. And up until 2007, it didn't matter so much that there was a lot of debt because interest rates kept going down. As I told you about, interest rates have been going down for 30 years. So no matter how badly the economy was doing. How big is this pile of Kissinger? <laughs> In my colon right now? <laughs> I mean, no, period. The, the, I mean, the, I think we should now call, no longer call it the dirty word poopy. It's now known as a Kissinger. <laughs> well, uh, officially, you know, it's in the, what, 15 to 16 trillion range. But unofficially, if you look at a, a bank like J.P. Morgan, you know, J.P. Morgan alone, on their, off their balance sheet, they have 90 trillion in, uh, in debt or derivatives. That's so, a big Kissinger. Yeah, that's huge. So they've got a massive Kissinger uh, uh, that's blocking the uh, J.P. Morgan uh, digestive tract in a big way. And uh, so my point is, though, with, now that rates are going up, though, you see, it becomes harder to unwind. This is just like your house. I mean, if your house, if you bought your house when when mortgage rates were low, and now a year or two later you're trying to sell your house, but it's a lot harder to, to get money because mortgage rates are moving higher, and the price of your house might be the same or sinking. You can't you can't sell your house so because the the environment is completely sure. Different. So same bottom line, it doesn't matter what they do. So so you don't know if they're going to taper or not taper. Uh, no, no. The question is that if if they will or won't. They 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 won't because they have no choice. And it gets back to what we've been saying. But it doesn't matter show. because the interest rates are already going up. But what's what's going to what's they're going to attempt to do? In my opinion, is they're going to attempt to. The Bank of England just got this guy, Mark Carney, he, he, and he and the ECB both announced simultaneously that they're going to keep interest rates where they have been. This implies to me that we're going to see a new era of global central bank cooperation, and they're going to try to create a global bad bank or slush fund to try to keep rates from going higher. So it's going to be... But let's expand on that. What I'm seeing happening is that just like you had LIBOR and coordination on interest rates, I'm seeing real interest rates go up even though the official number stays at, you know, zero or whatever. So they'll still get free money, but we won't. What? The bondholders are going to be serviced at, at the cost of the economy. What, what's happening without a shadow of a doubt is that the wealth and income gap all over the world is widening. 
You know, there's a there's a, an official estimate of this called the Gini coefficient. You can look it up on Google. And they it call tracks. that the uh, the uh, K Kissinger effect. <laughs> it's the effect of having too many Kissingers lodged in your. Oh, in, that's in, enough. That's enough. Go ahead. But the Gini coefficient <laughs> tracks how wide the disparity is in in, a, in an economy between rich and poor. We we know that in places like Saudi Arabia, obviously, there's a huge disparity between the ruling kingdom and the people at the bottom. And in a place like America. It's known for a place that has a very uh, a more e e egalitarian society. But in, in America and Western Europe now, you're, and especially in, in European countries like Greece or Cyprus or Ireland, Ireland, that is now exploding so that there's a wealth and income gap. And it's not a coincidence, therefore, sure. that we see a lot of social unrest. We see now revolution again in Egypt. We see social unrest all over Europe. We see in Brazil. We haven't seen it. Sure, as you said like five years ago on the show, as these interest rates... Uh, you know, uh, go to zero and as money's devalued worldwide, the places where they're living at subsistence are going to blow. So let me ask you this question. In layman's terms, what do you now expect to happen that they're moving towards uh, the bond market breaking up? They won't try to they won't try to keep that bubble going or they, they will try to keep that bubble going and they will try to do global coordination of interest rates. And uh, in my opinion, the whole NSA prism scandal is, is about. Uh, you know, trading on inside information because, you know, all the high frequency trading machines on Wall Street that go in there and they scout money, that's all based on insider trading. And they to make that work, you need information. And to get that information, that's what this PRISM NSA spying is all about. It's not about security. It's not about keeping anybody safe. It's about making the bondholders of these banks and the central banks. Yeah, it's about rigging markets and having it's intel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's market rigging. That's what PRISM and NSA is all about. And so I, they're going to be more invasive. They're going to want more information. There's going to be more. Uh, reaching into people's uh, bank accounts. There'll be more bail-ins, which is a euphemism in Europe for what we saw in Cyprus, where they just take money out of your account. So there'll be more of that uh, wealth grabbing from accounts or bail Hey, I wanna, I'm going to do some overdrive, I promise, for the callers like Rusty and James and uh, Derek and Grant and William. I'm going to get to all of you, but we got Kaiser for one more segment. I want to ask you about what you think of Mohamed Morsi. Uh, over there and the military coup against him. You've been to Egypt quite a bit and broadcast live from there on this show. Uh, so you've been to Egypt in the middle of all this a year ago. I want to get your take on it now with Max Kaiser. I'm your host, Alex Jones. Our website's InfoWars.com. Follow us at Twitter, Real Alex Jones. Now you can watch Alex Jones live at InfoWars.com forward slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. You can also browse the network, the InfoWars Nightly News, and over 60 movies and documentaries all together in one place. You can watch the Alex Jones Radio Show live as it happened. So check it out, InfoWars.com forward slash show. Folks, one of our new sponsors has a really neat online product you need to check out. It's PrivateInternetAccess.com. We hear news stories every day about the NSA spying on U.S. citizens, keeping your information private on the web has never been more important. PrivateInternetAccess.com specializes in keeping your information private by encrypting your internet connection, hiding your IP address so that you can browse the internet anonymously, offering firewall protection to prevent data mining, eliminating records off your computer activity. PrivateInternetAccess.com. Learn more at PrivateInternetAccess.com. And uh, lastly, eFoodsDirect.com forward slash Alex. Uh, until July 10th, they've extended it. They've never done a deal this good. Buy three, get one free of any of their huge line of incredible storable foods. The best out there and the lowest price for what you get. This is, I mean, I went out and found the best stuff and then got them as a sponsor six years ago. Uh, eFoodsDirect.com forward slash Alex to find all the discounts. And you get free shipping, but only for a couple more days. EFoodsDirect.com forward slash Alex or 800 409 5633. 800 409 5633. All right, uh, continuing. I only got a few minutes left with Max Kaiser. We're going to start the next hour, and I promise get to these calls. Max, a uh, Morrissey. I don't like military coups, but this guy was out of control and backed by Obama. And Obama is, and the, and the globalists are very mad he's been thrown out. Uh, but I mean, 14 million people hit the street. The army, it turns out, went to him and said, please step down. They will overthrow all of us. So I'm not saying they're even angels either, but uh, the head of Assyria, I think, rightly has said this is the death of political Islam uh, that the West is trying to hype up to tear that place up. Uh, what do you make of this Orwellian bizarro paradox of 
our government and NATO openly running the uh, Al Qaeda people. No, I totally agree with you. 14 million people or even higher numbers than that. I mean, that, that, that's the, the, these are the people. They're out there and they are. They want to change their government. They had an election. The, the guy that they elected turned out to be a loser. He, he said all the wrong things, did all the wrong things. So they're going to try it again. Now, I, I, I would equate the, the uh, army in, in uh, Egypt with America's Second Amendment right. You know, in America, we've got a Second Amendment right. In Egypt, they've got the army, the guy with the guns. So what happened was the guys with the guns and the people got together and they had a, an extended revolution. They had another revolution. They're going to try it again. So I think on my Twitter, I said, look, you know, the big difference is that Egypt has the cojones to go out there and do the revolution. They got the guns. They got the revolution. In the United States, they got a Second Amendment, but no revolution. So at least Egypt is, you know, trying to get rid of the U.S. puppets and put in representational government. Sure, so well, I, but I mean, that. it's not just that. These are bad U.S. puppets. I mean, they put a guy they're in. All they're all bad. They, they, what's a good U.S. puppet? They all, they're all terrible. The U.S. has totally lost its way here. So there's no good U.S. puppet. There's a terrible. You're servicing a very bad, evil place. The only thing keeping it alive is this artificial pumping up the, the U.S. dollar, the world reserve currency. Once that's over, then it's all over. So this is the last gasp of the U.S. dollar. They go for the dollar. They crash gold. We know the whole story that's going on there. With the bond market, however, is telling us that the days are numbered for the dollar. Sure, Max. And I'm not defending U.S. puppets because they're really globalist puppets. My point is, is the, the, the globalists put the worst people they can in to screw things up even more so they can buy it up even cheaper. And that's even what the Pentagon says about the global banks is they're destroying U.S future just for short-time profits they're crazy so, so the egyptians figured this out they figured this out in less than a year they figured it out they got on the street and now he's gone so they figured it out that's kudos to them now you know it, it, even jefferson said i mean the uh, the uh, soil of liberty has to be watered every 50 years with blood or something of this nature well yeah the tree of liberty must be watered with the blood of patriots and tyrants every generation well it's we're overdue alex we're overdue I tell you what, man, I just want to try to fix this peacefully, but these crazy bankers, I don't know what their problem is, but they're really cruising for a bruising. Uh, Max Kaiser, thank you so much. We'll talk to you again soon. See ya, thanks. There he goes. Johnny Appleseed was born during the Revolutionary War. He's not just a legend. And in more than five states, he introduced apples that had not even been grown in the colonies. Later, the seeds from plants he planted and cultivated and some of the varieties he developed spread across the United States. And it was Johnny Appleseed teaching the colonists and then the new Americans after we won independence the love of planting fruit trees that introduced that idea to North America. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a revolutionary act to unplug from the television, to unplug from the computer and all the globalist propaganda and to go out in your backyard or your front yard or planters at your apartment or on the roof of the building where you live and to plant a garden. Become the Johnny Appleseed of your community with seeds from the InfoWars Seed Center at InfoWarsStore.com. The simple act of planting fruits and vegetables and then tending them and taking care of them and then sharing them with friends and family is a revolutionary act against tyranny. The globalists, first and foremost, do not want us to be self-sufficient. The crony anti-free market capitalist, the fascist, are using socialism and collectivism to shut down societies. Stalin in Poland and in Ukraine and other areas starved on record more than 10 million people over five years by not letting them grow their own crops and collectivizing them. Mao killed between 65 million and 80 plus million people doing this same thing. The UN says they will use food as a weapon. They use genetic evil to attack the earth and major GMO companies have been caught going into growth belts around the world, even where GMO is illegal, and planting seeds everywhere to infect the genetics of the original crops. Almost all of the thousands of varieties of Mexican corn has been infected. 
they are in a genetic war against everyone. That's why we have to get these seeds and not just plant them on our own gardens and not just give them as gifts to friends and family to plant spring and summer and fall gardens. I'm calling on you to go out into the green belts, to go out into the areas and plant secret gardens. No, not of marijuana, but of the hundreds and hundreds of incredible high quality uh, vegetables and herbs and fruit plants that are here. Lemons and oranges, the list goes on and on. They will grow, uh, plum trees, grape trees, they will grow almost everywhere in the U.S. We can literally, not just buying these products from InfoWarsStore.com, but from wherever you get them. This aggressive program literally just came to me one morning when I woke up about 4 a.m. realizing that we've got to counter their genetic war against us with original real crops developed over eons on this planet. We have the lowest prices. We bought it in the biggest bulk that some of these companies have ever seen to ship this directly to you from the InfoWars Command Center. We stand for life. We stand for liberty. We stand for self-sufficiency. Go to InfoWarsStore.com, click on the Seed Center, and as of taping this, we have the seven top respected brands. We intend to continue to do research and find other companies, other specialties, other varieties to really take action. The InfoWars Store Seed Center has the largest online selection of heirloom, non-GMO seeds. Check out these products from our newest supplier, Heirloom Organics. The Medicine Garden for a natural remedy. The Tea Garden that contains every important tea herb you can grow. Fruit Lovers with 12 varieties. And the Tobacco Pack, additive and pesticide free. Join the gardening revolution today at InfoWarsStore.com. This is a revolutionary action we're asking you to take. Plant seeds everywhere today. Nurture them, bring them to fruit, and pass on the knowledge to others. Become human again. Discover your roots in the soil. And remember, the revolution against tyranny is growing.